Hi guys, I hope you are all doing well. Let's see today's question. So today's question is we have picked up from the topic of limits. And in this question, we have been told that we need to find the values for P and Q such that f of x is a function which is 1 minus sine cube x upon 3 cos square x when x is less than pi by 2. If x is equal to pi by 2, it becomes p. And when x is greater than pi by 2, this function f of x becomes q into 1 minus sine x upon pi minus 2x the whole square. Right? So this is the idea which is given to us for the functions that has various different entities for different values of x. And we have been told that f of x is continuous at x equals to pi by 2. Now when it is told to us that f of x is continuous here at x equals to pi by 2 means the idea which is followed here is the left hand limit which is for x equals to pi by 2 minus that is for all the values of x less than pi by 2. Whatever is the left hand limit that will be equal to the right hand limit when x becomes greater than pi by 2. And that is also equal to a function f of x at x equals to pi by 2, right? So at x equals to pi by 2, we already know that's equal to p, right? So I can already say left hand limit, whatever the answer we get for this, as well as whatever answer we get for right hand limit, both of them would be equal to p. That is the function's value at x equals to pi by 2. So first of all, our aim is to find this left-hand limit as well as the right-hand limit at the respective values of x. So if I want to find out the left-hand limit, now left-hand limit at x equals to pi by 2 minus, if I talk about, that becomes limit extends to pi by 2 minus. And the function which we have at x less than pi by 2 is this, right? So I'll substitute this function that is 1 minus sine cube x upon 3 cos square x. Now when I do this, I can substitute this x as something now because it's less than pi by 2. So I can write it as x as pi by 2 minus h. So if I see the limits now, for x it was pi by 2. For h it becomes, so if I put x as pi by 2 here, h becomes 0. So now my question becomes limit h tends to 0, 1 minus sine cube of 90 minus h upon 3 cos square of 90 minus h. So sine of 90 minus theta, if you see 90 is this, and whenever it is sine of 90 minus theta, the trigonometric ratio changes to cos. And if it is cos of 90 minus theta, the trigonometric ratio changes to sine. Also, if I see when it is 90 minus theta, means it is in the first quadrant. And in first quadrant, all the trigonometric ratios are positive. Right? So if I write it here, it becomes limit of h tends to 0, 1 minus sine of 90 minus theta, that is cos theta. So it becomes 1 minus cos cube h, 3 cos square. So cos of 90 minus theta, instead of writing cos square, I can directly write now. Cos of 90 minus theta is sine theta, so it becomes sine square h. Right? Now, I can write this one as 1 cube minus cos cube h. So I am trying to write it in the form of a cube minus b cube. And we know the expansion for that, that is a minus b, a square plus a b plus b square. Further, I also know a trigonometric identity that says cos square theta plus sine square theta is equal to 1. So sine square theta in the denominator which is present, I can write it as 1 minus cos square theta. Okay. So if I replace these two ideas, which we have already saw in this, let's do that. So if I replace that, what I get? That turns out limit h tends to 0, 1 minus cos h. 1 plus cos h plus cos square h upon. 
it was 3 into sin square x. So I can write that as 3 into 1 minus cos square x. Now 1, I can replace this with 1 square because 1 square is also 1. So it's a square minus b square. Now when I replace this, I will write the numerator as it is. But if I replace my denominator, I can write a square minus b square as a plus b into a minus b. And when I replace this, what I get? 1 plus cos h, 1 minus cos h. Now here if I see, this term and this term can be cancelled because they are the same terms, right? Now, if I put in my value of the limit, that is h as equal to 0, the answer which I get for the left-hand limit, that becomes 1 plus cos 0 plus cos square 0 upon 3 times 1 plus cos 0. So cos 0 and cos square 0, both of them are 1, right? It becomes 1 plus 1 plus 1 upon 3 into 1 plus 1. So that makes it 3 upon 3 into 2. 3 and 3 gets cancelled. You get nothing left in the numerator. So 1, right? And denominator has a 2. So the left-hand limit which I get, that's equal to. So that is the answer for the left-hand limit. And if I equate that, we already know the left-hand limit is equal to P, right? It's also equal to right-hand limit, but I, for now, I don't know the value of right-hand limit. I can directly equate this left hand limit with a function of pi by 2, where x is pi by 2, and that's equal to p, right? So I can write this, I get the value for p, and that's equal. So that is the answer which I get for p. That answer for p is half. Now let's try to find the answer for q, because I have the q also mentioned here in the left right hand limit. So I'll Solve this idea for the right hand limit, I'll, I'll again equate that with p because now I know the value for p that it is equal to half, right? So let's first try to solve this right hand limit. So if I start solving the right hand limit, that is at x equals to pi by 2 plus, I can write that as limit x tends to pi by 2 plus and the function which is given q 1 minus sin x and pi minus 2x the whole stuff. So if I write it again, if I resubstitute it something, I can substitute x as pi by 2 plus h. Now if I put x as pi by 2, h in this case becomes pi by 2 minus pi by 2, that's again 0. So limit h tends to 0. And the function now, if you see, it turns out q 1 minus sine of 90 plus theta upon pi minus 2x the whole square. If I substitute as pi minus 2 into this becomes pi by 2 plus h the whole square. Right? So if I try to solve this, limit h now still tends to 0. Now, numerator, if you see, q 1 minus. Sine of 90 plus theta, since it is 90 plus theta, the trigonometric ratio will change to cos. And when it is 90 plus theta means it's in the second quadrant. And in the second quadrant, we have sine and cosec positive. And since it is sine, it is still positive. So it is 1 minus cos. Now, here if I try to solve this, what I get? Pi minus 2 into pi by 2. That's again pi minus 2h. This gets cancelled. What do you get? Limit h tends to 0. Q, 1 minus cos h, I can write it as using the formula for double angle that said 1 minus cos 2 theta is 2 sin square theta. Same ways, I can write 1 minus cos h as 2 sin square h by 2 upon this becomes 4h squared, right? Now, if I further try to solve this idea, what I get? Let's see. Limit h tends to 0 now. I have q with me. Also, I have 2 by 4. So, that is 
already 2 by 4 and I have sine square h by 2 upon h square. So first of all, if I want to use the idea which you would have studied, that limit of theta tends to 0, sine theta by theta is equal to 1, right? So the angle should be same here. So if I want to adjust that angle, here also I should have h by 2. So if I try to adjust that, what do I get? So now if I adjust that, I have Q common 2 by 4 all out. After that, if I apply the limit, I have sine square h by 2. To have the same angle, I should have h by 2 square. When I am dividing the denominator by 1 by 4, I should multiply that same denominator by 4. So what I get here. So this gives me. So now entire thing, this, if you see it becomes. Same as this, so it becomes 1 square. So 2 cube by 16, it was 4 into 4, that is 16 into 1, so I get q by 8, right? Once I get the answer for the right-hand limit, that is equal to q by 8, that is also equal to function at x equals to pi by 2, that was given to me as p, right? So if here I see q becomes 8p, from this idea because I already have q by 8 is equal to p. So q becomes 8p and if I substitute the value for p which we have already got, what we got the value for p as that was half. So it becomes 8 into half that is 4. Right. So I get the answer for q also that is 4 and if you see what answers I have got as p is half, q is 4. Right. And if you see the answer or the option which matches here in this question is A. Right? So the correct answer for this question which is given to us is A. I hope you have understood how to solve this type of question. Right? We have we have been told in this entire question that it is continuous at x equals to pi by 2. So we just needed to find out the left hand limit. We solve that. We found out that's equal to half, so p becomes half because it's equal to at x equals to pi by 2. We also solved right hand limit that gave us the value for q that is equal to f. Right? I'll meet you again tomorrow with the next question. Till then, you can subscribe to my videos because it takes lots of efforts in making these videos for you. Thank you.